This guy, Roman Yastrib, he is a, a Russian uh, reviewer, but he does it in a very artistic way. He's reviewing this uh, MacBook Pro of 2021, and I like watching his reviews. They're very colorful, they're very creative, they're very long, and they're very detailed. And he comes up with some really interesting stuff in there, and I thought today I'd share just a little piece of uh, his video, and uh, since it's in Russian, I'm gonna do some translation, maybe even inserting my own opinion about it. All right, let's have a look at this. Поскольку большинство обзоров начинаются с характеристик, я начну с самого увлекательного, как я считаю. Это недостатки. All right, so he's going to start with the shortcomings because everybody else does the best stuff and he's going to do the worst stuff first. Я вам покажу, где Apple вас обманывает. He's going to show you where Apple is lying to you. И не договаривает всю правду. And doesn't tell you the whole truth. Это будет очень интересно. И начну я с недостатков дизайна. Давайте договоримся, друзья. Я сразу ставлю свою оценку и аргументирую ее. Так будет проще и интереснее. Итак, за дизайн я ставлю 4 балла из... All right, so for design he's giving it 4 out of 10, which is kind of what I said in my previous video where I said it's ugly. The new MacBooks are pretty ugly. Теперь аргументирую. Да, MacBook действительно красивый. MacBook выглядит солидно. И все же дизайн, я считаю, должен быть не только красивый и лаконичный, но и практичный, а также функциональный. Okay, so he's saying the opposite of what I said. He's saying that it's pretty to look at, but it's not well engineered. Uh, the design is not uh, well engineered from an engineering standpoint. Which is the opposite of what I said. I said it's ugly to look at, but it's actually designed well. It's very usable and performant. So let's see what he means. Number one, cholka. У меня вопрос. Зачем она такая большая? Ah, he's talking about the notch. He's saying, why is it so big? It doesn't have to be so big. Да, Apple, конечно, молодцы, что скрывают ее черной полоской в операционной системе. Но зачем такая большая челка? Под рентгеном мы видим, что ее можно. Okay, so he's using the uh, the iFixit image of the X-ray that they provided, and the X-ray is actually showing that the components behind the notch are useful. That's the size of the chip that's behind the notch. So it is useful. So it does need to be that large. Было уменьшить. Я к ней привык, но в верхнем меню до сих пор дебилизм. Ты не понимаешь, скрывается за ней какая-нибудь информация или нет, так как приложение не понимает. It is a little bit of true uh, there that you never know if there is a menu item that's being hidden by the notch. It's, I mean, you kind of hope that all the menu items are showing, but maybe not all the software implemented the notch properly yet in the safe areas. So maybe there's something hiding behind there. We don't know. But... Uh, in time, I'm sure all the software developers are going to implement the notch in the safe areas so menus don't hide behind there. But we have seen examples where that's not always the case. Некоторые, как после нее или до нее отображать информацию. В общем, размер и не оптимизация говорят сами за себя. Пункт номер два. Клавиатура. Okay. Now he's talking about the keyboard. That's the next one. Oh, этот MacBook under he's listing it under shortcomings. Surprising to me because I really like the keyboard. Я могу охарактеризовать следующим образом: гениальное инженерное решение с идиотским дизайном. Okay, so he's saying it's a genius engineering decision with an idiotic design. Colorful. Скажите, пожалуйста, Apple, зачем вы поменяли буквы местами на новых MacBooks? Interesting. Okay, so this is uh, this is kind of new to me. Uh, he's saying that the letters were changed. Uh, the placement of the letters were changed in the new design. Is that something that somebody would do? Change the letters around? I mean, this is a Russian keyboard he's talking about. So maybe it's only for the Russian keyboard. On my keyboard, I didn't notice it. I I use the English keyboard. Russian folks out there, did you notice the letters changing? That would be really shitty if they did that. Второе, более существенное. Какой придурок у вас в компании придумал делать черные клавиши на черном фоне? He's very colorful in his description of Apple's idiots. Uh, who decided to put black keys on a black background? И без капельки попадания подсветки на контур клавиш. Кто это придумал? Apple. Вы сами пользовались этой клавиатурой. Я месяц привыкал и... 
did anybody at Apple actually use this thing? And then he says he tried it for a month and he had a hard time. I mean, I don't have a hard time with it, but I don't use uh, my keyboard in a pitch black room. So maybe I would have a problem with it. I also don't look at my keyboard all the time. And uh, most of the time I use this thing. До конца не привык. Я постоянно попадаю не в те клавиши, поскольку вечером я в упор не вижу, на какую клавишу мне нажимать. Зачем менять то, что работает идеально? Надо было выпендриться, выпендрились. Я даю заключение. Придурки. Idiots, he's saying. Они еще и покрыли таким слоем всю клаву, что она даже малейшего света не отражает. В общем, просто ужас. He also says that the keyboard is now covered with some kind of layer of protection that it doesn't reflect any light, so it's even harder to see. Почему нельзя было сделать заднюю подложку отражающего черного цвета, чтобы вечером от монитора отражался свет, ну или сами клавиши? Что толку мне от подсветки, если вся клавиатура становится как мрак в один тон? Yeah, so he's complaining that if you're going to be looking at the keyboard, you're not going to be able to see the keys if you're in a really dark room and it's not reflecting the light from the monitor. I kind of disagree with a lot of that. That's a little bit out there. I, I sometimes use the computer on my couch at night while watching TV. Not recommended, by the way. You don't get much done. But... Uh, <laughs> I do do that, and I don't look at my keyboard most of the time. But when I do, I can see the keys just fine. Так еще и буквы сместились в противоположную сторону. Количество ошибок огромное. В общем, Apple, вы придумали хрень. Пункт номер три. Прогиб. Конечно, это можно отнести и к инженерам данного компьютера, так как они хотели убавить вес. Но все же мы так часто слышим, что MacBook такой красивый и элегантный, что хочется сразу показать, чего это стоит. Смотрите. А? Oh my God, it bends. <laughs> it does bend. Here's the one from 2019, the previous design, which I thought actually looked pretty good. Oh, this one bends too. Yeah, this one bends too. What about the MacBook Air M1? Hey, that one bends too. What about this Asus gaming laptop? The lid bends. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, lids bend. Nice try, Roman, very dramatic. But I'm gonna say that this one is uh, a non-issue. MacBook Pro 16 прогибается что на яблочке, что на надписи с противоположной стороны. Неужели только я вижу серьезную проблему в будущем с этим компьютером? He says that there's probably gonna be a serious problem with this issue in long-term use of the machine. What's the problem? Вы же понимаете, друзья, что данный MacBook нужно очень аккуратно эксплуатировать с верхней крышкой, протирать чаще клавиатуру от пыли, чтобы не поцарапался экран. Ничего сверху на крышку нельзя ложить. He's saying that the screen is gonna scratch on the inside if you have something pressing up against the machine. I really doubt that. Ох, вы сядете на MacBook или в вашей сумке? Yeah, Lord forbid he says that you're gonna sit on your MacBook, then your screen will be scratched. I think that's gonna be the least of your problems if you sit on your MacBook. И что-то весомое надавит на крышку MacBookа. Бац, и экран поцарапан. В общем, с этим идиотизмом рекомендация следующая: для 16-дюймовой версии пленка на экран обязательно, и лучше еще защитный чехол для переноса. He's saying if you are gonna have the 16-inch MacBook Pro, you should have a protective sleeve on it or a case. I used to put cases on my MacBooks whenever I traveled with them. Right now, this one is just sitting here. I'm not doing any traveling this year, uh, not yet. But uh, I don't need a case right now. But when I do, I will have a case for it, for sure. But is a case going to prevent uh, the bend? I don't think so. The case is still gonna bend. Most cases are pretty flexible. I have a couple of cases from my previous MacBooks right here. And these things are flexible. I mean, they are protecting the machine from scratches on the outside. But they're not gonna protect any kind of bending situation. All right, let's keep going. Пункт номер четыре. Не взять со стола такую красоту. Данный MacBook нереально взять со стола одной рукой. Нужно постоянно брать двумя руками. This is interesting. He's saying you can't pick it up with one hand. You know what? He's got a point. 
You really can't pick this up with one hand. Let's try the old one. First of all, the MacBook Air. Can you pick it up with one hand? Yeah, pretty easily in either direction. Let's try the MacBook Pro 19. And these machines were designed in such a way that they kind of float up. So there is space between the machine and the table. So you can easily pick it up with one hand. There we go. Yeah, from either side that works. Let's try the new one. <laughs> yeah, you can do it, but it's much harder. He's right. He is right on this one. I didn't notice this at all. So I don't mean to be insensitive here, but all of you folks that only have one hand, um, you might want to, I don't know, add some attachment to the machine or something else. I don't know, maybe not get this machine. It's gonna be hard for you to pick it up with one hand. I mean, living with one hand is hard. You probably are used to it, or you might have some way to get around the things you need to do with one hand. I'm just gonna stop right now. So you probably know how to, I'm not gonna stop. So you probably know how to pick up a MacBook with one hand. Me, I have two hands, thankfully, luckily, so I can pick up this MacBook pretty easily, but it's hard for me to pick it up with one hand. So he's got a point. Из-за нового угловатого корпуса. Старый MacBook был с закругленными углами, и он выглядел более воздушно, но все же его можно было взять легко со стола. А этот, как кирпич выглядит, так и берется как кирпич. He says it looks like a brick and it picks up like a brick. В общем, не практично. Конечно, друзья, это придирка, но мы говорим сейчас все так, как есть. Поэтому 4 балла за дизайн из 10, поскольку если первый и четвертый, то вот второй и третий придется пострадать. All right, that's his shortcomings. Interesting list. Uh, the first thing again is the notch, then the keyboard. And the fourth item is the most interesting one because I haven't even thought of that. I knew it was ugly, but I didn't know it was gonna be hard to pick up off the table with one hand. So nice work. I mean, this video is very long. It's 40 minutes long. I'm not gonna do a review of the whole thing, but if you're interested in some other parts of his video, he probably has some good things to say as well, but we've heard a lot of that already. I thought I'd focus on the shortcomings section because they are interesting. All right, that's it for today, folks. I'll see you next time.